I'd be lying if I said it was warm out today. It hasn't been warm for a while now. You're sitting on top of my axolotl pond. And I gotta do some maintenance on this today. Gotta do a little bit of work on it. It's gonna be a long, slow process for me. Not for you. I'll run through with you pretty quickly how I look after this axolotl pond over the winter. What I see as being the key benefits for these guys because I think this is a great system. You'll see and you can make some decisions for yourself but these guys do great in here. And I'm just going to give you an overview of how I keep my axolotl outdoors over winter because it's, it's an odd one. I know, I haven't seen too many people doing it. But these guys are doing absolutely great. They're nice and toasty in there. I'm not, so I'm gonna go get things set up and let's get these guys, let's get these guys done. Wow, it is not warm today. Goodness gracious. Oh, you know what, let's just get started by getting all these lids off. Take a look at what we're dealing with here because the extra sunlight we've had recently has caused massive, massive growth. In these plants and you can see anywhere where there was rain coming down like around these but you can see that's rain splashing up and taking the duckweed with it there's just been so much duckweed growth i love duckweed it's great on this setup actually the only problem is then light doesn't get true for anything else to grow properly or at least not enough of it i mean meaningful way so you can see here we got we got a swamp which is Right, let's get a bit of this off. Let's just check what's going on underneath here. Now, if you've ever kept the pond with duckweed on it, you'll know just how difficult it is to get rid of. I've already been in here with the net and it seems no matter what I'm doing, it's just filling the gap back over, can't see nothing. But the good thing is the axolotl feels super well protected. I might not be able to see quite as much of them, but predators can't either. I'm in an outdoor pond, that is a really good thing. And I just spotted there are thousands of eggs in here. If we take a look, these little kind of white kidney bean shaped guys in these little kind of clear spheres, that's a baby axolotl. Probably somewhere between a week and 10 days old or thereabouts, this rate of development. I see four or five axolotl hiding in the plants back there as well. Plants are awesome for these guys. My goodness, there are eggs everywhere. They've been busy. Wow. All right, so got a bit of cleaning up to do. Let's get stuck in. First thing I'm going to get to going as a water change because sun is setting real early this evening <sighs> let's get that going i'm going to show you how i do that i'm going to get some water trickling in here and uh, you might have spotted this guy here this is the overflow system when the water reaches this it can flow out through here now at the moment we just have that set up there just so that wasn't driven on the deck and you can see at one point the dog got a hold of this what i'm gonna need to do is make a little pipe a little fifth from there Swing down into the garden so I can use it for water and plants and stuff like that. But this is super handy because it means all I need to do, effectively to, to do a water change, is run some water in just over here. And it'll make its way through the pond slowly and flush out on this far side. That is exactly what we're going to get started here now. Now it's really important to obviously add dechlorinator. And you really want to make sure that with your dechlorinator it doesn't have any sort of unusual ingredients like aloe vera or any of those kind of stuff that are put in for kind of fish keeping sake. These guys don't don't like that stuff as well. It can irritate them. Um, so just straight up dechlorinator, no funny stuff added. Whatever you can get available locally because it varies all over the place. But at the end of the day, most of them are going to have pretty much the same ingredients. Goodness, there is just duckweed everywhere. I'll have duckweed up my arms for the rest of the day, guaranteed. Right. Let's get a water change on the go. We just want this a little bit. That's too much. That's a bit more gutter. But that's probably best. Let's take a look at that. Perfect. And you can see this female here decided to pop herself right underneath where the water was going to be coming into the pond. No big deal. She moved off quick enough. But you can see to her right that mess that we're clearing up. That's all those leaves breaking down, all that kind of silt and sediment that's covering the sand. That's the stuff that we need to get out of here. But we let this water change run for a while before we do anything else with it. It got cold real quick yesterday. It was like a cold front just came in, everything got covered in ice. The second the sun went down, 
and I knew it was going to happen so I, I shut down the water change it was beautiful for a little while we did get a good volume of water through the pond and that's awesome we need to do a little bit more and I also want to get some siphoning done as well that's sucking up all that crud that builds up on the bottom that's just leaves and, and waste and stuff that's built up over the course of the last couple of weeks on the bottom as we're surrounded by forest here leaves are blown in all, all autumn winter and and just leaves melting in the pond that's the yellow the adents and the duckweed stuff that's dying off it settles down it melts and these guys don't eat that stuff so there's tiny little critters in the pond that will consume that and just turn it into a into just mud basically over the course of a couple of weeks but we need to get that stuff out there i want this nice and clean and pristine and then um, because if that builds up in, in too significant amount you get little pockets of nastiness building up because there's very little flow in this pond so one thing about an axolotl pond or an axolotl setup in general and i think it's one of the key benefits of this system is that because it's so big you can put in things like air sponge filters in a bunch of different places and have just a very small amount of flow covering the entire thing and it doesn't upset the axolotls it's not it's not super noisy you don't have to have pumps running in it you don't have to have big flow going through because they don't like that they like that nice chilled out area don't like much by way of current or movement find they'll always go away from that one they see it eventually like they, they, they they'll they'll sit in it for a minute but they'll they'll move and um yeah it's just all that extra space for them to move around just gives them that kind of more natural environment which i really like for them and i think you know also the fact that you know you've got leaves blown in you've got you've got trees all around they got the sun moon and stars you know they've got clouds they've got rain it's natural like it's a pure i mean it's ireland so it's not always going to be pleasant but where they come from in mexico high altitude temperatures can be a little bit cooler and that's why they don't like warm temperatures it just doesn't happen very often where they evolved and they're just not able to adapt to it so um irish outdoor summer temperatures perfect for these guys i've never seen the pond get up to like 22 or anything like that and even if it did creep up to 2021 20, all you have to do is put a fan across the top of it it's going to cool it right down by a couple of degrees so awesome let's get stuck in and get this sorted now axolotl ponds are a bit different from aquariums because you need to keep the flow rate really low for these guys they don't like that big current so things will inevitably build up on the bottom of the pond and that's what we're getting out here by doing the siphon and going through and by hand i'm collecting as much of that leaf litter out as i can that's built up over the last couple of weeks and you can see the sediment here that's what i'm kind of stirring up a little bit with the end of the hose and then i'm just using the siphon to suck that out of the pond end and get rid of it completely we can come back in shortly and flush some of that out but once it's kind of free floating in the water it's easier to get out of the pond and that's what we can do with the water change but i'm going to get as much of it off the bottom of the pond as i can with the siphon so basically i got my siphon going into a bucket here exact same as what you're going to do with your aquarium and this is a pretty small diameter hose i don't want the big huge volume going out of this this is going to be a longer slower process i could get the big hose and have this done quickly but i don't want to i'm spot cleaning around here for the best part and i'm using my two hands because if there's leaves and stuff that are in here that get stuck and um, rather i don't want to kick up everything i'm just taking them out then by hand and uh, and clearing them out and because i am um, i do tend to feed things like, yeah so we've got some of that crud there get rid of that and then because i've got the hose right beside it any of the waste that gets lifted by that kind of sucking right out it it gets out quick enough and it means it's not just going all around the pond because we don't have a fine particle filter in the pond we have a couple of air sponges so this is the way of getting out all those fine particles and that's what you want you want to clear those out as quickly as possible is it siphon no it's still going good stuff i ought to stop there for a second good grief that'd be no good get this thing going once you did not want to put your mouth to it again that's for sure wow nasty but yeah if you're feeding stuff like fish meat that kind of thing that stuff if it, if it ends up on the bottom uneaten it will go rotten and nasty so doing this is important and i i tend to make sure that if i'm gonna if i'm gonna feed stuff like that which i did the other day I'm ready then to kind of get it out if they haven't consumed it i do see one or two little pieces of that down here you definitely want that gone so yeah keep working away here for a while this will be a slow process but a relaxing one it's actually not too cold at all today i thought my arms are going to be freezing on in here but air temperatures are much milder so it just makes this a bit more pleasurable 
And the filtration system on the pond is purely biological. We have sponge filters and the water will pass through them as these bubbles are coming up. It draws water in through the sponge filter and that helps with biological filtration. And then we've got all these plants as well. They absorb some of the nutrient waste that's being produced in as those good bacteria are breaking all of our ammonia down into nitrites and nitrates. Okay, so got all that side done, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna do all this side as well. They're all over here at the moment, kind of away from where I was. So I got rid of a lot of leaves and stuff. You can see all those, all that gunk there. Got those out, so that's good. Bit of sludge, and it kicked up a little bit, so that's just sucking up that, and I'm gonna get back onto that and monitor that now, because I don't want the axolotl going near it, catch a gill on that, and rip it off, awful stuff. So you don't want that. Be mindful when you're doing your, um, you're siphoning and same with goldfish and stuff as well I put a sponge on the end of it and that, that that helps massively but that's actually sucking out all the disturbed kind of the tritus that was down there it's all getting sucked out there now rather than getting flushed through the whole pond because some of that would just end up settling basically it's catching all the free flow and stuff you can see the water's just trickling in that's the way I'm gonna leave it and while they're while they're a little bit more exposed you can see one two three there the heaters there are the 50 watt heaters that are in here so 150 watts total not a whole lot for something this size and it will create warm pockets and cooler pockets further away from it temperature does eventually kind of dis distribute kind of not too badly but there will be warmer and colder pockets but they find their way to where they want to be it's actually amazing they'll they'll wander around and if they're feeling a bit cool they'll go to the warm pot and vice versa same as if they were in a lake you know they can rise and lower and um, the height that they are in it and um, and surface is going to be a little bit warmer during the summer and you know they, they find where they want to be um, so sometimes you'll see a bunch of them kind of hanging around here and sometimes they'll be dispersed. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna leave this run for a while and we'll check in once the water clears up a little bit because we stirred up a bit of a mess. And you can see here, we really did kick up an awful lot of sediment, but that's okay. That's the whole idea of this process. You can see here over the course of the time-lapse, it's getting flushed out of the pond. Things are getting much clearer through this water change. Yeah, some sediment will settle back down again, but that's no problem. We'll come back in again the next day and stir things up a little bit and flush it out again. Usually I'll do my, and I do the same in aquariums. I'll do my siphoning over the course of two sessions rather than just one. Gets things really nice and clean. Now the outside of the pond needs a good clean too. I'm going around and wiping off all the algae. There is nothing worse than ruining a pair of pants by coming out and sitting by the pond, trying to get a bit of maintenance done. Just when you're feeding these guys, just not good at all so around the pond got a good clean as well now these guys we can see here there's a female at the front and a male on the back and there are two of about 16 of them in here as i've seen and these guys are doing brilliant you can see she's probably carrying eggs you can tell big roundy belly on her she's absolutely beautiful and you can tell this guy here is a boy because just behind his legs those big lumps yeah that's a boy female here does not have those behind her legs instead she's a big roundy belly probably carrying eggs these guys breed frequently throughout the year. Now, I get asked all the time, you know, is it okay? Does it put stress on the females? No, it doesn't. These guys are doing what they want, when they want. It's all natural. They have so much space to move away from each other and do their own thing. These axolotl don't have to meet another axolotl in here if they don't want. There's about 13 big hides in here. Loads of little small plot spots from the hide. And also in between all the plants as well but look at those she's got beautiful legs beautiful gills beautiful tail nothing ever bitten off or anything like that that's why you keep these guys species only don't put other things in with them that are going to bother them biting at their gills and all that stuff just not fair on them now look the reason i did this video now is because i'm hoping over the course of the next couple of weeks to actually get this fully enclosed to get a roof over this some sides around it that's the plan it might take a couple of weeks but i wanted to do the video now because just wanted to show you guys it is possible if you live in a region that has a temperature over winter similar to ireland to have an axolotl pond outside lots of insulation is all you really need you don't need to make it super deep a couple of small heaters lots of cover for them and away you go these guys can be kept outdoors no problem main thing is summer temperatures to get too high i wouldn't risk it but that's something we don't have to worry about in these parts never gets too warm here in ireland the brew here is a friend to the axolotl. In fact, he makes sure the water is always in good enough nick because he is the taste tester extraordinaire. He absolutely loves the water out of his pond. He likes water, but he prefers it after, you know, an axolotl has swam through it. And 
these guys don't seem to mind him at all either. The only incident we ever had was once Deadpool, Axlotl had mutter to all these Axlotl actually. She bit him on the nose one day. And I'll be honest with you, it was one of the funniest things I ever saw. And it still kills me to this day, I didn't get it on camera. But he's out here making sure there's no predators around. And it does help just keep these guys protected. So he's definitely a friend to these guys. But guys, I'm going to wrap things up here. Really appreciate you watching the video. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Because it does definitely help the channel. We're going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves. And we'll talk to you in the next video. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.